Hi, everyone. <laughs> They're jumping on. They're jumping on, that's right. That's awesome. We've got people from OC, Indiana, <laughs> Chicago. This is so rad. Colorado, Maryland. This is great getting all you folks together. We miss seeing each other in person, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay, well, while we're waiting, a uh, couple things. So everyone's on mute. And then the other thing is we are videotaping this. So we will pop this up on YouTube for other people to see. So if that makes you uncomfortable, we just want to make sure that we tell you that in advance. And then we'll definitely make time for um, questions at the end. So I'm going to introduce right. these two fine gentlemen that we are really, really lucky to have uh, part of our event. Bart is our event host and Tyler McCandless runs our youth running program. He's won the event nine times and they've been huge supporters of ours and just tremendous with their time and energy. So thank you so much for coming on and, you know, just giving people some ideas of how to run virtually, what this kind of all means, some training things, some things that you're doing that might be able to help people move along the process. Yeah, Tyler's okay. such a slacker. He only won a race nine times. <laughs> He missed two let, just because he wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, I had to let JT win. You know, we can pick yeah. on JT. He's not here. Yeah, so he, that's kind of right, nice. Take it away, my man. <laughs> well, first, thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, it's really awesome to see such a big group of people that are interested in just connecting because you know, right now we're all navigating this new normal that's this COVID era for the time being. So being able to connect virtually and have a positive experience and have something to train for is so super important. And uh, I don't know how many people here have actually run the race before or were hoping to do it for the first time or plan to do it next year, but there's no race that's more positive Aloha spirit than the Kauai Marathon. And I think this event going virtual, there's still a way for us to share in that Aloha spirit and really continue to make a, a positive difference um, with each other by interacting like this. Uh, I'm still planning to run the, the virtual race and do the best that I can uh, and be able to, you know, feel like I'm, I'm still there. And we're so excited to go back next year, connect more. It's going to be an even bigger and better event uh, than ever before. So um, I've won it nine times. I've done the half. I've done the full. I'm happy to talk about the course, about training, uh, anything related to uh, the Kauai Marathon. So I'm really excited to answer questions, and I'll let Bart Yasso take it over and talk about, about his experience in the Kauai Marathon. Yeah, so I never won the Kauai Marathon or half marathon. Actually, I do the half every year. I love this half marathon course. I'm sold on the half marathon. I absolutely love it. But as Tyler said, that you really feel like family when you run this race. Uh, you know, everything, you know, it is a smaller race in the big picture of things. Uh, we're not a 10,000 person race. And you get to see people around the island the whole weekend. And I, there's just something about this race that I, I just can't get it out of my system. I'm there every year and I'm good, I keep coming back. To do it virtually, I live in Pennsylvania. I spend half my time in Pennsylvania and the other half in Maryland. Uh, so I think I'm going to virtually run in Pennsylvania just so I can get more hills. I want to mimic that half marathon course and try to find somewhere around my home that I can run like seven and a half miles uphill in the first part of that race because that's what happens in the race. Uh, we don't have hills that long in Pennsylvania, but I think I can meander around and I'll try to mimic the, the half marathon course. Uh, I'm entered in two virtual races right now that are going across the United States, two different virtual races. And I find the virtual race is very motivating, a uh, great way to connect with people. And it actually, it keeps me honest. I mean, uh, I've been running 43 years and my running days are years ago, but I'm still out there, uh, not nearly running anywhere nearly as fast as I used to, but I, the one thing I still have, I enjoy it more than ever. In fact, I described my pace yesterday on my run as an enjoyable pace. It's a perfect word for me. You know, I used to do the fart leg workouts and the speed workouts. Now I do enjoyable runs. And uh, I'm telling you, if you were to describe the half marathon in Kauai, I would say it's enjoyable, especially when you get to the 11 mile mark, actually about 11.2 because then you know there really are no more hills. There's one last sneaky hill after mile 11. 
and then you get up and you can just see the ocean and oh my god you just go for it because it's nice downhill it is just so special and then that atmosphere at the finish line uh everyone is so happy so i i thank everyone that joined the virtual because it is really going to help the race long term uh that's the one thing most races aren't talking about in the general public is uh, the financial part of having a race canceled and not having income coming in, even though the race already has expenses for at least the last nine months. So it's hard on races right now. So when runners support virtual races, it keeps races in the game so that they can go on and be around for a long period of time. So personal, thank you. Uh, other than I just want everyone to stay – I. Someone asked me about my running and I said, right now it's all about, it's a balance. I don't want to overdo it and risk getting sick. Uh, but I also want to stay fit. So I do that fine line. For me, it's like three to four miles a day. The other day I did five miles, which is a big deal for me. But I don't want to push it. I really am keeping it controlled. Uh, I'm in my mid sixties and I have pre existing conditions. So I got but they call two of the two of the three stars that they're looking for. So if I get sick, I'm going to be in trouble. So that's why I really don't overdo it. And uh, but I also want to be fit, and that's that balance I'm doing right now. So I hope everyone can stay safe and stay healthy. That is the key. And even though we're not going to be personally in Kauai, or most of us aren't, uh, I will be there in spirit with you guys when we do this virtual race. I'm telling you. We gotta post cool pictures and really stay connected and stay together. So, Bart, what do you think for if we're you know coming up on July first tomorrow? So yeah. If the race was on target, we would have two months and a week from now. Yep. Got a nine week period. Yep. So, what kind of mileage are you like? You're saying you're typically doing three to five, but yep. some training for the marathon. What are some of the suggestions? And maybe Tyler, you have them as well. Um, for this nine week period, like how to set yourself right. up for success for even if you're going to run it wherever, Pennsylvania or right. Florida, whatever. Yeah. So nine weeks out, I would look at the two week taper where I'd start taking it easy. So really you can seven weeks. do a fair amount of mile, mileage and training in the next seven weeks. And the cornerstone of all this is the long run. So that half marathon, if, if you're, you know, if you're just getting, if you're just building up the mileage, if you can get up to seven or eight miles right now and then get up to 10 or 12 miles before we start that taper two weeks out, that is, that is the key. And the marathon, I'm telling you, this marathon course is tough. Uh, well, every marathon is tough, but Kauai is really tough. But I would say, you know, it's, it's the difference is that long run. So in that uh, trend for the marathon, Right now, it'd be very helpful to be up to 15 to 16 that you can ramp it up and get a couple 18, 20 milers in and then take it easy those last two weeks and get ready for that virtual start and virtual finish line. Tyler, you want to add to that? Yeah, just the only thing to add is how important consistency is. It's, wow. it's about like the next seven weeks is all about being as consistent as you can be. So yeah, the, the long run is certainly the cornerstone is, is really key, but just maintaining good quality mileage, consistent mileage, not trying to hit uh, a high number one week and then a low number the next, just be wow. consistent and it'll pay off for both the half and the full. Yeah, I agree. And if we were going to Kauai, train on some hills would be really beneficial <laughs> yeah necessary I think yeah. <laughs> forget beneficial mandatory because <laughs> i'm telling you and uh you know the other thing about Kauai for people that haven't done it the weather is usually pretty nice at the start we start before sunrise uh tyler is usually about at the five and a half six mile mark when the sun comes up i'm about the four mile mark when the sun comes up but oh my god when that sun comes up it's just so beautiful comes over that mountain and then it will warm up a little bit just depends on the clouds but uh but if you're training for some hills because that the early part of the half is very hilly uh and then you get some nice downhill the marathon you get this it 
it happens at 10.7 where the split is. So we all run together till 10.7 and then there's a sign, the big chickens turn right and do the marathon and the little chickens turn left and do the half marathon. Uh, the way to sign it is so cool. But that's where you, Tyler can tell you, you hit some more hills. Yeah, when you make that turn, it's a pretty good climb for the next mile or two miles. And then you hit the rolling kind of hills of Kalaheo. You're always going up or you're going down. Um, but I will say the last five miles of the marathon course is mostly downhill, which is kind of uh, quite nice. But the sun gets pretty warm by then. You're, it's really beating down on you. So hydration is so important in any race, but in particular in the full marathon in Kauai. Yeah. We don't run through many parts of town, but the little villages, the areas that we do run through, the people are enthusiastic. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And I think you just brought up a good point. What, um, how do you feel like people should prepare themselves for hydration if they're going to be running this virtually uh -huh. in their own, their own place? So is it getting a partner who's going to be dropping water for you? Is it going to be having your own personal system? Like, what are some of the things that you've done that have proven successful? Well, Rob, you, you had a great point because hydration is everything, not only in training so that you stay injury free and healthy, but also the day of the race. Personally, I would, I think it's easy if you can set up a, a loop course, like three loops that you can come by and get fluids. And uh, I, I tend to carry a handheld bottle and I don't mind doing that. Uh, but I know a lot of people don't like to carry stuff when they run. Uh, so doing a loop course would be very helpful. And uh, it seems to be doing these loop courses are like an in thing right now with all these ra virtual races that are going on. They encourage that. So you do stay hydrated. You can put some nutrition there and it is really helpful. And then you don't have to drive your family crazy and say, Hey, drive by me at uh, four miles and then have your kids meet you at eight miles and then your spouse at 12. Uh, so if you do, if you set up a loop course, that's like three or four miles, I think it's very beneficial. And you can yeah, the only, the only other thing that can be fun is if you have a significant other who's also running, then you get to support them, and then they could support you. So it's kind of, it is one fun thing about the virtual event is like you're, you don't have to both start at the same time. So uh, that can be a pretty fun thing to do as well. Yeah, I, you know what, now that you say that, i got to work that out with Dan, what we're going to do. <laughs> I didn't think that far, because, yeah. I know she's going to run faster than I am. We'll, we'll figure it out. Maybe I'll send her. She can head off first, and then I'll we'll sit water out somewhere. You just do point to point. You run the downhill section, and then if her run the uphill section. <laughs> there you go. I like that. <laughs> I'll mention that, too. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it is, you know, even though it is virtual, we still want everyone to enjoy it and have fun and feel like you're part of something. So it's really going to be helpful and beneficial if you can send photos and tag the race and everything and really show that, okay, we understand. I mean, we, you know, this is really tough times on a global scale. And the more we can connect, the more things we can do to make us feel good and make us feel like we're part of something bigger than we are. I think is very helpful. So I want to see a lot of smiling faces uh, when you guys finish. Speaking of smiling faces, my buddy Levi just showed up. Levi, can you say hi to the friends? <laughs> hey, Levi. Levi. He was looking forward to the cakey run, but it's not uh -huh. way to you. Although he might but. have gotten frightened to see his dad in the chicken outfit. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Yeah. So the Kiki run is the kids run we do at the Kauai Marathon on the day before the race, which is really a big hit. And all the kids chase the chicken, which is Tyler in the chicken outfit. So yeah. not only does he win the race, he runs around in a costume that's like a thousand degrees <laughs> the day before the race, having all the kids run after him. It's really fun. But getting a, a hundred kids to run that course and enjoy running is like one of the most special things. There's so many spectators, everyone's cheering. It, it's something worth seeing. Uh, and I know Robin has some great photos and videos of that as well um, that are on social. So something to look forward to in 2021. But then you took it to another level and uh, Tyler, and you really work with the kids running in Hawaii, not in Kauai, not only just at the race, but 
Uh, you brought in shoes. You did a lot of stuff for these kids, which is really helpful. It's been uh, impactful for in both ways because it's super special to go to these schools and talk to the kids and get them excited about running. And you know, there's not very many sporting events in Kauai that bring in people from all different states and countries. And, you know, the Kauai Marathon is very special and it's great to be able to connect and give back to a community and have the, um, the community get some inspiration from the race too. Yeah. Yeah, it is fun. Kids, kids run is a big part of the whole weekend. Yeah. Right, Levi? <laughs> Say bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> See you, Levi. <laughs> Bye, Levi. Um, well, I just got a couple of questions here, and then I'll throw it out for yeah. people to ask their own questions. Um, one is, well, we were talking about hydration. The other concern will be restrooms. And I actually had a post on Facebook. Someone asked me about that, their concern with uh, restrooms. So what we're going to do here on Kauai is we're going to get some courses put together, probably in the east side and the south side, that we know mm -hmm. are safe. We'll have, um, you know, because we can't close the roads down, obviously, like we normally do. Um, with hopefully some of those things in mind, like possibly, a, a, you know, restroom at the beach park or something that we know that people will be able to stop at. But I don't know if you guys have, you know, we're not going to be able to do virtual course suggestions for every single state or city. So I guess the biggest wow. thing it would be is like trying, like you said, doing a loop course or making sure, you know, for us, from a, from a management standpoint, we want to make sure everyone's safe. That's our yeah. first and foremost priority. So picking a course that's safe, but then also you can get your hydration and also use the restroom if needed. Right. So so people that haven't done the Kauai Marathon or Half Marathon, when you get to the H station, there's always a lot of porta potties which are helpful to a lot of runners. So doing your virtual, uh, that's why I think if you do this loop course from home, I think it's very helpful. I can get to the porta potties before the race. I don't, I can usually. Okay. No, they can tell. I don't know who came on. I can't tell who's. Uh... Oh, I'm not sure who that was. But yeah, I think if uh, you know if people are running it in Poipu Bay area, I would be running in between like uh, Kaloa Landing and the Hyatt. Yeah, because then you could go through. Yeah. yeah you Duck into the Hyatt. Duck in the yeah. Kaloa Landing. Use the restrooms and then keep going. Well, we, we plan to do that here, and then we'll do our best uh, to connect runners on island, but we also want to connect everybody, you know, as we see Maryland and, you know, Oregon and California, we want to be able to connect everybody on that level, too. So we're, these, this is just like the first, our little training Zoom test here, but we'll be coming up with more things as we get closer to the event week to make sure you guys feel connected and part of a bigger experience than just saying oh, okay we're gonna mail you a bag and go do your run on your own and like that's great and but no we want to we want people to be excited and someone here said where can we upload photos so right now stride for Kauai is our hashtag so if you go on instagram and do any posts stride for Kauai, we'll be able to repost those um facebook doesn't have the same thing but you can upload and tag us on facebook but we'll probably do a lot of stuff through instagram i'm not sure if everyone yeah and then are you having participants upload results? Yes. So what we'll do is race entry is our registration platform. And that's who you all registered, you know, with, and we're going to be giving you instructions like mid August before that week period. And you'll be able to download your race bib, download your finisher certificate when you're done and upload your results. And we'll have a whole results page set up for you. One on our website and one that you'll be able to access through race entry. They've been amazing part of ours yeah just to help us through that whole process so you'll have your bib and then we're focusing on trying to mail everything out uh in the middle of august we're ordering everything now um so that we can ship everything to the mainland folks and then we'll have a localized like a local vendor that's gonna um allow people on Kauai to pick up here so that'll be, so you'll, you guys will have like your shirts and all that stuff before the September 1st start of our September 1st to the 6th where you can actually run. Yeah, I think it's really cool if you have the bib on and maybe, maybe you don't have to run on a shirt, but you could put it on afterwards and post photos because if you do your own run from your house, you're going to win that race, which is really cool. <laughs> Well, and, we're gonna do and, then, and then it'll change once you get loaded in the results, or at least for some of us, not Tyler. 
but, uh, <laughs> the rest of us, the, the, but it's kind of cool that uh, if you set up your own course, you are the winner, which that is really cool. Well, and then, we'll a finish line contest too. So whoever comes up with the coolest finish line, we're going to have a whole voting online. We're coming up with that right now. So get your creative juices flowing to see how you can make your finish line better than everybody else's and get the family yeah. involved and get the community involved. And um, so I think, I think the start too, because we always start with the conch shell and the tiki torches and well, we're going to do that too. You had made that recommendation of we're going to have some downloadable files that you can put on your phone. So it'll be like Bart, you know, introducing the start and, um, you know, the conch shells and music. And we're going to put all that together for you too. So you won't be just like, you know, go start, do your own thing. So you can kind of be part of the bigger picture. So that's a, a lot of the things that we're working on. Um, I'm getting a few questions here. How many repeaters do you have? I think right now... We're at 50, five, zero, uh, whoever, Darren, who asked that question. And I think there's a couple. Five, five old that have done all 11. That have done, well, that will be doing all 11 plus the virtual. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So that would be our 12 Peters, which we're actually getting a mock-up of what they're going to be getting uh, this week. It's just pretty exciting. We're putting that together for them as well. Um, so that's the repeaters. Are you going to have the participant? Okay. So fastest known time that from California uh is that like fastest known time for both for sure. half and the record Tyler has both the yeah Tyler record. has the record for everything so we'll have to go to him for well, I don't have the women's record but he has the he has the men's record <laughs> so what's the marathon time uh mar marathon's 221 oh. 20 something I think it's 221 and change and then the half marathon is 106 37 I believe so yeah, yeah. And I think fast eight group times too. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I think Brett Eli was the one. She was the marathon record holder. Two forty six, I think she ran. I don't remember the half time, but it was probably Lauren Tippett's in. I think it is Lauren, and I think it's one. I think it's one seventeen or one eighteen. Yeah, I was gonna say one eighteen. So it, it's yeah, in the ballpark of what Bart and I did. Yeah. Okay, and then Carrie, I don't know, I see Carrie, this would have been my first half in Kauai and my 50th state and my half marathon 50th state goal. Oh, that's so awesome. I don't know where you are. Let me find you. Oh, there you are. Hi, that's so cool. Well, you know what? We're going to have to get you back for sure so you can actually have your proper 50th state. Yeah. We'll make it super, super special for you. It'll be worth, worth it all. That's so cool. I love that. Okay, then we're getting the fastest chicken time. What's that, Tyler? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was delirious by the time I ran the last lap. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> the very... chicken, uh, so the older kids and the kids run, Tyler, do a half mile? Or... Yeah, it's about a half a mile. It's two yeah. laps around the, yeah. the lawn there at the Grand And there's Park. some fast kids that don't need running shoes that are just uh, true Hawaiian kids that just do a barefoot and run fast. Yeah, as hard as they can out of the out of the starting line. So the first hundred meters is a dead sprint. It's all <laughs> fun. <laughs> it's a bit. Oh yeah, it's for fun until they, you know, their fierceness in their eyes. They were perpetuating <laughs> the sport. We're getting people to want to run in the future. Yeah, that's the whole idea. Does anyone have any questions? I'm, I'm trying to go through the chat to make sure I didn't miss anything. Is there anything specific even to you, like? With, I mean, because we have a small group, so we can actually address. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, go ahead. I, I plugged in a little bit late and stuff like that. But what is, is there a time limit set to it and stuff like that? Or? This is Carl. I know Carl. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, so, no, there won't be a time limit. I mean, typically on our course, for people that haven't done it before, we do have the time limit to get through the tree tunnel. But for okay. your uh, own virtual race, so that you can do it at your own time. The only thing we're asking is that you run the mileage mm -hmm. on the same day at the same time consecutively versus. So, you, know, so you, you have to, you can do it at, like for instance, I could do it on Maui or if I come over there, I can, like I probably will do the, the half or something like that. So you can say you can set up a course, right? Well, you know what, Carla, like I told you, we're going to connect people up that are coming up because we've already had a lot of people tell us, oh, we're going to, uh, 
come and we're still going to come to Kauai and do the race. And so we're going to try and connect as many people together that Saturday and Sunday of the weekend mm -hmm. um, that still want to participate. And we'll, right now we're researching what we can do course wise safely for uh, whatever groups of people. That's our biggest thing is we have to be. So will the, the course, uh, will the race be on Sunday or Saturday or? It can be whenever you want, from September 1st to the 6th. You can run whatever. Like, I know a group of people that are all running on Saturday instead of Sunday now. Mm -hmm. um, like, it just is better for their schedule. So, you have that's the nice thing about the virtual race is you have a little bit more flexibility to do what works if you have kids or a significant other that wants to do it. Or Yeah, you can start early to avoid the heat in Hawaii. You can go off at 5 a.m. If you're running down in Poipu where it's pretty safe to run because there's a lot of light. So yeah, and yeah, Poipu, there's more, uh, you know, we've got like the bike lanes and things. So it's easier to have. I mean, there's always runners down there all the time. So right. we'll probably, like you said, do a loop maybe between the Hyatt, Poipu Beach Park or down to the harbor and back, something like that is what, what we're What about uh, the one uh, out in Kapa, the, the, the one that goes out to the beach and stuff? Yeah, so the that's the other one we're looking at in Kapa is the bike path because that would be away from all mm. the cars and all oh, that wow. yeah so that'll be an option too so we've got a sunrise you'll have the best sunrise you've seen yeah. if you do that bike yeah. path yeah okay so we have what is the temperature humidity in Kauai so we know what to train for in Cali for next year <laughs> yeah. you've done if you've done Oahu Oahu starts at five in the morning I believe and ours starts at six and the, their race is in December which is typically a little bit cooler than our race so we usually start in like around 78 and finish around 85, depending on when you come in. Um, that's typically what happens during September, that time of the year. And we can't start earlier because the funny thing is, well, it's funny, there's not enough lights in the islands to light up the bypass road that we would need to keep runners safe. So we have to start an hour later than Honolulu. They have the luxury of being in downtown Honolulu with tons of lights and they can run it safely. So it's probably, I would say, if you've done Honolulu, it's going to be a little bit more humid and a little bit warmer. Yeah, um, but sometimes we get that uh, cool, misty rain early in the morning, which really yeah. is helpful. I, the last few years, which has been amazing. And like last year, I yeah. thought it was fairly cool. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, you know, I did the half 10 times. And the only time I ever felt hot is when you get to mile 11, because you're not in the trees anymore. You're out in the sun between 11 and the finish can get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's not, it's not, a, and especially starting at six, most people are done with the half by nine in the morning. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't start getting really hot till 12, one, two is when it's the hotter parts of the day. So just as a reference, typically the full marathoners are coming in around, well, the fast guys are coming in at 8.30 um, and the full, the half, excuse me, is coming in around seven, 7.05 when Tyler comes and People doing the marathon, the weather can change a lot because you can be in sun, be in rain, be in sun, be in rain, as Tyler can tell you. And if it's one hour, when you did the half, you got rained on in the tunnel of trees. When I got there, it wasn't raining. Yeah, it rained so hard that my watch actually stopped working. Like it like got waterlogged and stopped working. And Bart's like, it didn't but, rain. <laughs> it didn't rain at all where I was. <laughs> Yeah, so that's the difference. I mean, change. And then, of course, what we all love are rainbows. And uh, yeah. Yeah. we can get a lot of rainbows, especially the uh, course between, like, after the Tunnel of Trees, between, like, seven and uh, eight and a half miles, nine miles. There tends to be a lot of rainbows there, which is uh, it's always worth it. Yeah, well, someone just posted the several rainbows one year. Yeah, we've got that's some of our race photographer, Joe Evans, has gotten some gorgeous shots just from – the beautiful yeah. rainbows that you get to see. And that always kind of inspires people as they're running. And, you know, you all got your thing wherever you live that makes it cool. Um, let's see. Oh, they said, has the state of Hawaii opened up to mainland visitors yet? So as of August 1st, we will no longer have the quarantine, but we will have a mandatory mm -hmm. test requirement that you have to take three to five days before you travel to the islands. Um, but the quarantine will be lifted as of the end of July. Yeah, so right now, you, if you come, it's 14 days, right? It's still yep. 14 days? You're yeah. quarantined for 14 days. Yeah, and they mean it. Oh, no, <laughs> they, they check on you. Yeah. My friend's here, and he's, they've had the National Guard come to our house three times, and they call and check, and yeah, it's very, 
It's very serious. Yeah. Yeah, we want to keep our island safe as much as possible. Oh. Is there, does anyone else have any other questions? I don't want to keep on too long, but uh, let's see. Anyone you want to ask me or the experts here? We'll do another one probably in like four weeks, maybe towards the end of July, just yeah. because we'll be that much further along in training and we can come up. I see you. I'm Dan, right? I have a question for Tyler. This race is actually a training run for my Baltimore Marathon um, that I'm doing in October. And it's my first marathon, and I won't lie to you, I am, like, really nervous. I've only done, like, maybe 14, 15 miles is my longest, but I've done, like, 17 halves. So I have that experience, and I have to part when I just, you know, trying to get uh, through that mental block of, of that pass, what I normally do. So do you have any suggestions on a newbie for a marathon like I have a water belt so like maybe like goose no goose like you know I do um I do thrive which is a nutrition program that mm. I do first thing in the morning so that will help me like fuel in the beginning but I just love to hear which what, what you would have to say yeah well, great question and congrats on signing up for your first full marathon. That's super Thanks. exciting. And the half, like four or five weeks, six weeks before your full is absolutely perfect. I would do the same thing. Um, so that's great. Uh, and then I'd say if you're already doing 15 mile runs, that's outstanding. And the fact you've done a bunch of halves is also very good. You know, you can try to increase the long run a couple more times, but I think most important is just practice your nutrition, you know, take that water belt, try some goose. You're going to want some more calories on a 26 mile run than you will on a 13 mile run. So really just dial that in so that you feel on race day, very confident that you are ready for the full marathon. So when I ran the Kauai full marathon, I think I took five or six gels because it's pretty warm and humid. I wanted there on the side of more nutrition. So, you know, make sure that you have a plan to get, you know, somewhere in the range of 300 to 600 calories on your marathon and practice what works for you and just keep at it because it sounds like as if you're very well prepared for October. Yeah, um, I appreciate run with how. It's an app, uh, run with Hal Hilligan, and uh, no, no, he... I get a notification every morning. Okay, you have to run this today. Nope, you're, you're off today. You know, like so. But uh, yeah. Um, but excellent. Well, uh, said consistency is key. So stick with that. Um, and yeah, stuff. Well. Um, I'm out every morning. So. And then on my long runs, I come back and I stick my feet in ice water and ice my knees and, you know, stuff like that. Smart. That's good. So a couple of people said, uh, um, let's see, do we have any training plans that we can send? So maybe what we'll do is we'll put our heads together and see if we can just come up with some generic stuff from Bart and Tyler. We can do that. Yeah. Like some best practices, some things that you guys know have always worked in the past, like you're saying. And like not trying anything new on race day and, you know, making sure you do all your trials and tribulations prior to when you actually want to run the race. Um, and maybe we'll come up with some of that. So we will, we will get back to you. Uh, whoever, I'm sorry. Oh, Kate. One more question. So I, I'm planning to come to Hawaii in 2021. Uh, my best friend lives on a big island. I've been there like four times. So I checked by an airplane ticket, call it a day. Um, so I did the Kona half marathon. And out of my 16 halves I've done, that is the hottest half marathon I have ever, ever, ever ran. Oh. I, I, you're on that, I think like, it's Queens Highway. You're on there for like five, six miles of no shade. And I remember like having two water bottles, one for my mouth and one for my head because I was so hot. Um, how much shade and how much sun is on the course in Kauai? Oh, it's huh? totally Lots a different of shade. <laughs> Lots of shade. I mean, you go through the tunnel of trees. 
Um, I mean, I guess when you're coming out of mile 11 at the split, that's pretty open, but it's not, I know exactly where you're talking about. And their race is in June, which is typically a little bit warmer than September. So not only do you have the heat and lack of trees or shade, you'll have, we have a little bit lower temperatures over that time period. And we typically have uh, lower temperatures than the Kona area in general. Right. So that is a very hot race. It was so hot. <laughs> it was, uh, so. Oh, I will feel nice and cool compared to that. Yeah, it won't be as, yeah, that's cool. I, I had a quick question. Um, is, is there any plan to have a challenge medal for people that want to do all the Hawaiian marathons? So it increases tourism and also gets us more bling? You know, we've talked about that. Um, it just seems like everyone kind of has their own little thing, but I'm glad you're bringing it up and we can revisit that. Cause we've always thought it would be cool to do if like you did Honolulu, Kauai, Maui, Big Island, you know, that it would be fun to take the blame. And uh, I, think, I think JT, JT service should do some stuff where it's like uh, across the ocean instead of across the bay, we should do like across the ocean challenge as well. We should, I'm gonna, I'll put that on my list for him. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay all right well we'll definitely do another one of these uh in the next four weeks and we're going to be sending out a newsletter too just so you know in the next couple of weeks we have some exciting announcements from our sponsors alaska airlines is uh still on with us, uh, us Kauai coffee wilcox health um for white four dealers so we've still got a lot of support within the community which has been amazing not only support from the participants themselves so just stay tuned on social media look out um for items in the newsletter that will give you guys some connectivity with your friends and fellow runners and we'll just continue to stay in touch and i handle all the social media so if you guys have questions you can always reach out to me that way as well yeah and stay safe keep training and uh Thank you for doing this. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thanks for joining everyone. Yeah. Thank Aloha. you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah. Shaka. Bye -bye. <laughs> Shaka. Shaka. That's how it's going on. <laughs>